okay? Because that's how they create much more inflation. That's how they satisfy many of the the, the bills that they pass and and fund a a government that that is not that doesn't know how to spend money. Let's talk about the U.S. dollar, which keeps uh, ticking higher here. Um, especially via via the Japanese yen. I feel it's a news headline that has flown under the radar here, but the currency quickly depreciating here. What What's this telling you? Well, first of all, it's what it really says is that the central banking system globally is a bunch of frauds, okay? They are continually to, you know, the weaker dollar, okay, even though the dollar is stronger now, it still buys a lot less than it bought before. This is a, a, a almost a joint effort between the central banks globally to reduce the value as they try to aim for a global digital currency versus the fiat currency system. You know, the minute we went straight fiat and no backing of currencies is the first day they started to basically steal money or give you taxation without representation. Okay, because that's how they create much more inflation. That's how they satisfy many of the the, the bills that they pass and and fund a a government that that is not that doesn't know how to spend money. I mean, you know, if you and I spent money like governments do, we'd be either in bankruptcy court or jail. So they they can continue to you know devalue these currencies, which is basically fraudulent. So on that note, you know, we see the latest headlines from the Fed. Uh, Bullard now putting 75 basis points on the table, three and a half percent by year end, he said would be a great target. What does this mean for us? Well, I mean, look, we've, we're, we're already suffering through inflation that never been seen before, because even, I'll show a CPI print of 8.5. I would say if you multiply that by three, you'd get to what true inflation is. Look at the, the price of oil. It's over up over 100 percent since yeah. Joe Biden took office. OK, look at the cost of, of grains. Grain markets are flying higher, which means you're going to pay more at the stores if you can get the goods. You then add in the conflict or the war, the senseless war in Russia and Ukraine, and that's 30 percent of your wheat crop, OK, which is going to create a lot of riots and a lot of wars, you know, in smaller countries that aren't going to be able to eat because in, at least in America, we can pay more, but we'll most likely be able to eat versus some of the poorer nations, they're not going to be able to eat. Now, that's a, that's a problem that has been created, and it's all been done for absolutely no reason, because we have this, we can solve that problem in five seconds in this country right now. How would you do that? All you have to do is go back to fracking uh, and shale producing, and you could be a net exporter of oil. You could bring the price back to $35, which drops yeah. inflation, which then puts the pressure on Russia and makes the sanctions real instead of the BS that they give us now. OK, and and suddenly you're supplying the UK, you're supplying Germany and now Russia's in real trouble because they cannot have they won't have the funds to do what they're doing right now. Well, Baba, why the hesitation? Why not do that? Because this administration wants globalism. They do. They want socialism. They do not want to have a free market system. They want to control the market, which is why they refuse. They can blame it on, on climate change all they want. That is a bunch of bunk. OK, and if climate change was really the issue, what are you going to do about China and India who are who represent about 36 percent of the world? OK, they're never going to stop burning coal until they find something cheaper. Are you going to put a dome over the United States of America OK, and keep out their pollution? So you have to ask yourself, at what cost are we going to do what we're doing? And right now they're telling us that they don't care about Americans. They care about this globalism and giving power to everybody but us. And you know what's interesting? Um, obviously, the, the Fed really trying to orchestrate a soft landing here. But even Goldman Sachs came out with a note earlier this week saying, look, they're really going to have a tough landing with this. It's not going to be an easy road. They're not, probably not going to get what they want. And now they're saying there's a 35 percent chance of a recession within the next two years. Is that it, it, do you agree with that? Is that a, um, is that where you would place the bets? Danny, I could argue we're in a recession right now. You know, one thing about economists is they don't tell you until after the fact. I don't want to know later. I want to know now. But I can yeah. tell you that when I, you know when I go grocery shopping and I have to do when I'm by myself in Vegas, it's expensive. Okay, and the shelves are empty. Okay, and the Fed, the Fed is as worthless as you can possibly get. They've always been worthless. They've done nothing again but tax you without really taxing you. But they don't understand that they should have started raising rates ten years ago. This is not. We shouldn't be in this position right now. 
and between a Fed that is clueless when it comes to markets. Now, I'm sure they're brilliant people. They're all from high degrees. But when it comes to understanding common sense and a market system, how a market works, where asset classes actually price themselves through price discovery, they don't get the fact that they have to raise rates. But that then you tie that back to the administration that if they would, would produce more oil again, we could then ease the pressure off the Fed and they wouldn't have to raise so quickly. But they're going to be forced to raise much faster to slow the pace because we're, we're actually running into the Jimmy Carter era with stagflation, which is building right now, which is the worst possible scenario you can get. So you think stagflation, you're putting stagflation on the table. I think so. I think we're there. I think, look, you know, markets never announce themselves and neither is the economy. But to me, if you look at the lack of people working, okay, so employment and inflation, we've got low employment, and high inflation. It's not a good mix when people are not going to work and they continue to try to live up the government. So let's bring it home here uh, to gold, Bubba. You know we always do. Uh, we briefly touched over 2,000 an ounce uh, to only come back. You know, we're always hovering around there, but why does the metal seem to always have a difficulty with the round numbers here? Struggle to hold 1,900, struggling to hold 2,000, what gives? Well, I, I don't I think I don't think it's gold the metals itself. I think every market always has funny funky stuff happen around whole numbers. I think whole numbers that's why we see the celebrations of like ten thousand dollars, twenty thousand, whatever. I think that it was natural. I know you read my article on Monday, which I said that two thousand would be some resistance. And a pullback to nineteen sixty would not be a surprise and would not change the bullishness of gold. I think gold is going a lot higher. I, I think there's a great chance that gold makes new highs, all time new highs now. Okay, now it won't be today, it won't be tomorrow. You know, nobody knows when it's gonna be. But I don't think we're gonna reverse into a downtrend. I think if you look at the commodity markets in general, and gold is nothing more than a hard asset commodity, but if you look at commodities, they're exploding higher. And I don't see anything different for gold. I think gold is gonna go dramatically higher. And again, I don't put numbers on things, but certainly I do believe we'll make all time new highs on this run up. And I think that silver, obviously I don't think you're gonna make all time highs, but I think silver is gonna go higher. Uh, and I think finally platinum may have found a bottom as well. So I think the metals are great here. I think they're great opportunities. But remember, in 1999, gold was $300 an ounce. So now it's it's 2000 I mean, you know, it still appreciates on an annual basis. And you have to look at the either the trading picture or the bigger picture. And the bigger picture is you should always own some physical gold in your portfolio just in case. Because the one thing that it may be needed for, it may be needed as a currency at some point. Oh, and just on that note, I know you say you don't know when the all-time high is coming, but is it within this year? I think I think it could be within the next couple of weeks. Okay, we're next not that far away. Weeks. You know, again, it won't take long. If 1960 holds, which it tested on Tuesday a couple of times, if it holds, I think we could go right back to 2000. You know, remember, the higher price gets, the thinner markets gets, and markets are very thin right now. You know, there's not a lot of participation. The The, the faster and bigger they can move. Okay. And I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw new highs by next week. Okay. And again, I, I'm not going to predict that, but I wouldn't be surprised. You know, <laughs> we uh, will that? bring you back. We will but bring no, you I'm back. Not gonna, I, just, I don't like to, you know, to, to say ridiculous things. I don't know. I, I do know yeah. Yeah. that there's a great opportunity for a very strong rally and a continuation of what we started. Remember, we held 1,800. We jerked around there for a while. Then we held 1,900. And now I think the next step is to get up and over 2,000 and hold that. Yeah. And then I think we take off to who knows where. Absolutely. Uh, and if I just may share a personal story on the supply chain, you think it's bad in the U.S. I'm, I'm in Canada right now, as you know, and I just celebrated uh, my boy's two-year uh, birthday party. Uh, already two years, but I couldn't even get basic party supplies, like basic, not even anything fancy. You so know, if you think it's bad in the U.S., it's 10 times worse up here. Well, again, they're also another place that doesn't want to go for natural gas, right? I mean, they just, I think Trudeau said on Monday, uh, or no, no more, in Ontario, no more go to drilling for natural gas. Now, you, it's one of your biggest resources, but you don't want to go get it. So what does that tell you? about the government and that's why your supply chain is so weak because those jobs are gone that does the work that make a lot of money and we don't have the supply but this supply chain issue is going to be really bad i take pictures all the time i shop at the biggest grocery store in the united states and it's empty and that's not good